Hey everybody and welcome back. So it's that time of the month. It's that time of the booktube journey month where I make a video telling you about all the books I read last month. Last month being March. Now, trivia about me, yay. I hate making wrap-ups so much. I literally hate them. So I don't know how to make this kind of thing fun. It's water, I swear. Did I do a February wrap-up? I don't remember, but it's a new month, it's a new day, it's a new life, it's a new year. I am not making sense. Um, and I'm gonna tell you about the books I read in March, okay? Alright. So yeah, we're gonna play a game. We're gonna play how fast can I get this out before my leg falls asleep. Because when the leg falls asleep, I'm gonna stand up and this video is gonna be fucking over whether or not I actually finished doing the wrap-up. I will literally cut to black, because I'm over it, okay? All right, so this is as good as it's gonna get, so let's just get into it. Uh, the first book I read this month is X-Men Codename Wolverine by Christopher Golden, and this is a Cold War era spy thriller that just happens to have superheroes in it. In this book, we predominantly follow Wolverine and Mystique, but we have a host of other characters namely Sabretooth, Black Widow, Maverick. I think S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers are mentioned at one point. Also the fact that Black Widow was in this story and the Avengers and S.H.I.E.L.D. were alluded to makes me hopeful that perhaps this story will be adapted now that Disney owns that Sony branch that did the X-Men movies. So yeah, this was fun. I gave it four stars. It was cute. It was nostalgic. I enjoyed it. The story that we did follow was very easy to understand, very evocative of, you know, Cold War spy flicks, the Soviets and the Iron Curtain and all that stuff, and nukes and all that shit. And yeah, if that sounds interesting, you might like this. Moving on. So the next book I read is a graphic novel, and that is Crossed by Garth Ennis. We're thrown into this world where there is this disease that those who contract turn into violent, crazy people. No, they are not zombies. This is different in the sense that the people who get this disease slash virus, whatever, are the same person. However, their desire to enact violent acts just gets increased tenfold. So we follow this band of survivors as they are thrust into this world. And this was actually really fun. It was like, the Stand by Stephen King, and it asks many questions like, is retaining your humanity worth it in such an inhumane world? Lots of real life questions, but in a very different sort of story. The art is really good. It's super graphic, super disgusting, super gory. There are some very fucked up and disturbing scenes. I was gasping. This was really good. I gave it four stars, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. And if you like fucked up shit, and amazing art and a decent story, go for it. Next, I read probably the best book of this entire month, and that is True Crime by Samantha Kolesnik. And wow, you guys, I did not expect to love this book that much. Let me just tell you that. We follow this young girl and her brother, and they have this abusive mom, and the book opens up with them getting out of that situation. I'm not gonna say what happens, I'm not gonna say exactly what that means. We follow these two children who were abused their whole lives, and we see what they choose to do with their newfound freedom, and how they live their life post-abusive situation. This is a cross-country journey, it is wide, it's vast, it's epic, and it's all in under 200 pages. Like, this is a pretty short book, but it packs a punch, it talks about many interesting things, huge trigger warning for animal abuse. I read this book for my reading books written by women, horror vlog, this vlog video link down below. So be sure to check out that vlog after this if you'd like to hear more about this book. I personally really loved it. I loved what it had to say. I loved the characters. I loved the writing. I loved the dialogue. I loved the various moral dilemmas and gray areas that were in this story, and I loved seeing what these people did despite the fact that they were making really inhumane and horrible decisions and what that stemmed from, and the kind of sympathy that we have for them despite what they do. Great stuff. 
Yeah, so after this I read an arc which was given to me by author Judith Sonnet. She writes extreme horror and she was kind enough to gift me an e-arc of this book, The Clown Hunt, which I read and which I really enjoyed. We follow this guy named Willow. The story opens up with him getting cheated on by his boyfriend and so he loses his house and his relationship and his job all in one day and ends up resorting to gay prostitution. And when he's in the prostitution world, one thing leads to another and he finds himself in a very dangerous situation that I'm not gonna get into, but you'll see. Couple things. Very fast-paced. I loved the characters. I loved the ending. I loved the gore. It is super violent, super gnarly. Chapter 12, I think, the chapter Wishbone, has one of the most brutal and possibly offensive kills I've ever read in an extreme horror novel. Boundaries are definitely pushed in this book. And needless to say, you will be gasping. I was gasping in my vlog and it was intense. It was a fun time. And it's definitely one of the most fun slasher books I have read in a long time. It wasn't perfect, however, because I do have a couple complaints, one being there wasn't enough gay prostitution. I mean, look, if your character in an extreme horror novel is gonna be a gay prostitute, you need way more fucking. Like, you gotta commit. You have gotta have the creepy clients. You have gotta have the drugs. You have gotta have the potential, you know, risk of an STD because of sketchy clients and dangerous situations. It's an extreme horror book. You need to get into all the potential things that people could fear with what they're doing in that current context in the book, you know? That's just what I feel at the end of the day, but I just thought that that needed to be in there. So there you go. But regardless, overall, I gave this one four stars. It was fun, it was great, it was quick. You can bang it out in one afternoon. And as slashers go, this is pretty good stuff. All right, so after The Clown Hunt, I read Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. And this is a very interesting take on the exorcism story. Most exorcist demonic possession stories are built into the framework of the Christian religion. You know, devils, demons, and priests, and stuff like that. This one presents that type of story with a feminist rebrand and a background of ancient Mexican lore. So you have a very fresh, very different, very interesting take on this story that pushes back on Christian fundamentalism, pushes back against the patriarchy, the expectations foisted upon people through tradition and colonization. I loved this book for the most part, but the third act kind of just felt very rushed and I just didn't care for how it all wrapped up. But yeah, for the most part, interesting, definitely recommend. And I gave this three and a half out of five stars. Next, I read Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison. Okay, let me just tell you the whole backstory. So I was on a live show with a bunch of other horror booktubers and one of the guests, my friend Jordaline, uh, ripped this book up in the live show and said it was like the worst fucking trash ever. And then, I was invited to buddy read this book with my friend Meg, one of my faves, and she said that this is also the worst book she's ever fucking read. So I was just like, damn, what the hell happened in this book? But then I would see other various Instagram horror tubers, many women included, who said that this book was really good. And I was like, what the fuck? So I feel like some people are expecting either of two reactions for me, either violent hate or straight up adoration and praise. And I'm here to tell you <laughs> that I'm not gonna give you either of those because I really didn't have much of a reaction to this book. Yes, the critiques of it being misogynistic are completely valid, but the character was a misogynist. And I'm not saying that anyone is wrong to have this opinion of this book. Honestly, at times, I thought this book was written by this screenshot. That's how bad it was. That is how fucking annoying the narrator was. This book kind of has the same reaction that American Psycho did when that book first came out. And before anyone assumes, because we fucking love assuming shit on the internet, before anyone accuses me of saying that Chandler Morrison and Brett Easton Ellis are in any way, shape, or form on the same league, that is not the case, okay? The writing in this book is shit. It is awful. It is terrible. The quality of the writing in this book is 
the same level of annoying pretentiousness as nothing but blackened teeth, but with the vocabulary of whoever wrote Den of Vipers. It is not good. It is really, really excruciating. There isn't really much plot, and the very shallow nature of the story just made any semblance of potential commentary just void. <laughs> of course, I need to be fair, there is some stuff that I did like. Various anti-social sentiments in the text were very fun to read because I'm very anti-social, I'm very shy, I don't like being around other people. And another thing was the actual extreme horror scenes, specifically a scene in an abortion clinic and the scene at the end, fucking amazing. That was good shit. However, this book was really bogged down by the lack of plot scenes that had barely any connective tissue, and the fact that the internal monologue of the narrator was so annoying, and there was way more of that than there was extreme horror. I gave it two stars. As far as extreme horror goes, stuff like this is just not what I'm looking for. But I will say this, if I was given the choice to read A Dead Inside versus, um, you know, a bland generic book of the month thriller, I would choose this because despite the fact that I have major moral disagreements with certain things that Chandler Morrison did, at least he went for it, you know? <laughs> and if anyone feels encouraged to like shit on me for not hating this book or loving this book, I require proof that you gave shit to literally every single person that gave this book the same review I did, okay? Fuck off. So after Dead Inside, I finished my reread of A Little Life by Hania Yanagahara. I read this book for the first time many moons ago, six years ago to be precise, and I loved it then, and I loved it even more now, and I really can't get into how much this book means to me, how seen I felt, how much I related to Jude, sad to say, but it's true. I relate to him in many, many ways, many of which I are quite personal that I can't divulge here, but some of which I did divulge in the vlog I did, this vlog, link down below. I gave this book five stars, obviously. This ranks up there with my favorite books of all time, with I'm Thinking of Ending Things, Survivor, and Night Film. <laughs> Shit. I'm literally like thinking about what my favorite books are and what they say about me. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, the vlog contains spoilers. Just saying. I straight up read two 800 page books in a row. Okay, so I needed a break. But yeah, so after a little life, I read House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. We follow this woman named Bryce and she is half fae, she's got red hair, she's cool, she lives in Crescent City, and the book opens up with her shifter, wolf, were werewolf shifter friend, Danica, her, her best friend, getting murdered, and this book is essentially an 800 page detective procedural with a fantasy setting where she and this man named Hunt investigate and try to track down Danica's killer. Yeah, I don't really have any deep thoughts about this book. It was really fun. The characters were annoying as fuck at first, but then they did eventually grow on me. But I will say that this has one of the most explosive finales I have ever read from a Sarah J Mass book. So hell yeah, that was freaking amazing. I already have the next book and I cannot wait to dive into this. It flies by, there's lots of humor. I wrote LOL a lot of the times besides so many paragraphs. The side characters are good. Some complaints though, there were a lot of elements of Akatar and Throne of Glass sprinkled throughout this story. A lot of the times it was pretty blatant, okay? It did take me out of the story every now and then. I gave this four stars, this was really fun, and I sincerely hope I have a good time with this book. Or a better time, we'll see what happens. Next, I read the first five volumes of this manga series called Doku Mushi. So this series is extreme horror. I'm having a hard time finding the sixth volume. So, updates to come, I'm enjoying it so far. We follow this group of strangers that wakes up in this abandoned classroom with nothing but a meat cleaver. So it kind of implies that they need to chop up, kill, and cannibalize each other. We see that all the fun stuff, you know, hidden agendas, shifting alliances. The mystery is interesting. It's fast paced. The characters are interesting. The side characters are more interesting than the main character though. So that's like a huge minus, but so far I'm enjoying it and that's that. 
And then I reread the first four volumes of Gantz, probably my favorite manga series when I was in high school. I never finished it though because I stopped seeing volumes in bookstores and it kind of fell off the radar. But I do love it and I love that I'm kind of getting back into it now. It's really gory. I love the characters. Will I finish this entire series this year? I don't know, but we will see what happens, okay? And then, real quick, I read The Night Shift by Alex Finley, and this is the second book I've read from this author, the first one being Every Last Fear, which was actually on my best books of the year list last year. Amazing book, and this book does not hold a candle to it. I am sorry, this was a major step down. We have multiple points of view, just like with Every Last Fear, but it was just... It was giant. I mean, the, the third act was just like bleh, and the huge reveal at the end was just like, okay, whatever. I gave it three stars. I don't really have much to say about this book. It wasn't bad per se, it was just pretty disappointing, and knowing what this author can do, this was just like a whatever, you know, follow up, just. Yeah, I don't really recommend it, honestly. However, I did really like the book I read next, and that is Lovesick by John Athan. This is a book where we follow a guy who wants to get revenge on his cheating girlfriend, and it is so sick and twisted and fucked up and dark, and I really, really enjoyed this book. It's short, and it packs a punch, and we really get into this guy's head with the planning and the execution and his thought process. And this is extreme pitch black horror. So extreme and so cruel that you might actually feel sorry for the person who is receiving the punishment. And yeah, I gave it four stars. It was good stuff. Trigger warnings for everything. This is one of the scariest protagonists I've ever read from, and I cannot wait to read other things by this author. Okay, um, I'm so tired and I look like a mess, so I'm gonna just conclude this video now. I hope to see you in future videos, and as always, take care. I lose myself.